changing his mind. While at Mount Wilson, Einstein heard the Belgian scientist, Le Maitre, detail his theory that the universe had been created by the explosion of a primeval atom and was still expanding. Einstein jumped to his feet, applauding. This is the most beautiful and satisfactory explanation of creation to which I have ever listened. Einstein's public statements once again modestly ignored the scientific importance of the meeting. Die Hochachtung für die bedeutenden Physiker und Astronomen dieses Landes, die in den letzten Jahren der Wissenschaft so bedeutende Fortschritte gebracht haben, habe ich von Europa mitgebracht. Die Freundlichkeit, die mir hier von allen Menschen zuteil wurde, kannte keine Grenzen. Herzlichen Dank und auf Wiedersehen. Dr. Einstein and I, from Paramount U, take the opportunity to thank our many friends of the United States for the innumerable kindness they showed on us. We promise you, as best, if you want us to return, we shall do so soon. During the 1933 trip to California, Einstein's affiliation with Germany was permanently severed. He learned that Jews were barred from civil service and that his country house had been confiscated. I do not wish to live in a country where individuals have no legal rights, freedom of speech, or academic freedom. The situation in Germany today is one of mass mental illness. Back in Berlin, a newspaper displayed this headline. Good news from Einstein. He's not coming back. So Professor Albert Einstein settled at Princeton University's Institute for Advanced Study. The media continued to hound him. He set a lifestyle there that remained unchanged for 20 years. He lived in a simple two-story house, walked to his office, and for relaxation played the violin or went sailing. He rarely traveled, letting the world beat a path to his door in New Jersey. Meanwhile, the scientific world was moving fast in its appreciation of Einstein's genius. Studies in radioactivity and discovery of the existence of the neutron were supportive of Einstein's famous equation, E equals MC squared. Right. E equals MC squared is famous with Einstein, but actually he had difficulty deriving that equation. If we, here we go. Einstein's mistakes, the human failings of genius by Hans Obhian. Um about the author Hans Obhian. Um he's got a PhD from Princeton University. Uh, he's the author of several textbooks spanning all undergraduate levels, physics, principles of physics, relative T, so forth. So he's so you're supposed to know quite a lot about relativity. And um, this is what he says. This is the book, Einstein's Mistakes. This is what he says. Although Einstein was the greatest genius of the 20th century, many of his groundbreaking discoveries were blighted by mistakes, ranging from serious areas of mathematics to bad misconceptions in physics, and failures to grasp the subtleties of his own creations. These foren this forensic Biography dissects Einstein's scientific mistakes and places in the context of his turbulent life and times. Um, it says, for instance, Einstein's first mathematical proof of the famous equation E equals MC squared was incomplete and only approximately valid. He struggled with this problem for many years, but he never found a complete solution. Uh, better mathematicians did. So he didn't really derive the equation E equals MC squared correctly. He, he had to really struggle with it and other people had to carry on after him. And if you really look into this issue of E equals MC squared it can be viewed from other theories other than special relativity. So it's not not really a reason for believing in Einstein's relativity.
One kilogram of coal, about two pounds, converted entirely to energy, was envisioned to yield 25 billion kilowatt hours of electricity. Uranium, which is a high atomic weight, is radioactive, which means that its mass tends spontaneously to convert to energy. But according to Einstein's theory, any mass can be converted to energy, even this turtle. Matter and energy are interchangeable. Indeed, they are two aspects of the same thing. If matter sheds its appearance of having substance, we call it energy. If energy congeals and takes on a different form, we call it matter. A small amount of mass, like our turtle friend, could theoretically be turned into a nuclear weapon if you convert it all to energy. But don't worry, Mr. T. We're not in a convenient form for conversion. No one figured out how to do it. C equals MC squared made the development of nuclear weapons possible, but it also explains how the sun and the stars can go on radiating light and heat for billions of years. From 1920 to 1934, scientists from many countries... Oh, I, don't, I don't think E equals MC squared is dealt with very well, but I let it pass. So, Woody really pointed out it can be, it can be dealt with in the context of other theories and Einstein's relativity. ...were applying E equals MC squared <coughs> to supporting discovery. In Britain, Francis Aspen and Ernest Rutherford and Sir James Tadman. In France, Frédéric and Irène Joliot Curie. In Germany, Otto Hahn and Fritz Strassmann. In 1934, the first physicist to realize that the equation could be applied to military ends was the Hungarian Leo Szilard, a former student of Einstein. He tried to persuade the American authorities to undertake research toward the development of an atomic bomb utilizing uranium fission. The Germans were at that time harvesting uranium from all over Europe, and it was clear to Einstein and other scientists why they were doing so. Einstein finally decided to sign a letter to President Roosevelt regarding the situation. This new phenomenon could also lead to the construction of bombs. And it is conceivable, though much less certain, that extremely powerful bombs of a new type may thus be constructed. A single bomb of this type might very well destroy a whole port together with some of the surrounding territory. Almost immediately after receiving Einstein's letter, Roosevelt began setting up the necessary committees to investigate the matter further. A month after Einstein wrote his letter, Germany invaded Poland and destroyed Warsaw. The Second World War had begun. It should be stressed that from childhood, Einstein had been utterly opposed to warfare. He had, however, experienced the madness of the Nazis firsthand. Some of the greatest physicists of Germany had derided his thinking because it was not Aryan, and he had seen both his person and all of his fellow Jews threatened with extinction. Einstein's letter to Roosevelt was an act of despair. Later in the war, Einstein was opposed to the use of the bomb, except as an isolated demonstration of its possible horrors. He learned of the explosions over Hiroshima and Nagasaki the way the rest of the world did, over the radio. For Einstein, it was the worst news of his life. He immediately felt responsible for this terrible event. I committed a great error in my life. I signed the letter to the President Roosevelt, recommending the manufacture of the atomic bomb. He did not participate in the actual development of the bomb, and he did participate very prominently in opposition to further uses or development of nuclear weapons. These scientists whose tragic destiny has been to help in making the methods of annihilation more gruesome and more effective must consider it our solemn and transcendent duty to do all in our power to prevent these weapons from being used for the brutal purpose for which they are intended. Okay. Okay. It, uh, that's now an advert right? And the next part we touch upon quantum physics so it's not that much more to go we dealt with Einstein's uh, special relativity his general relativity and now we're going to touch on about what he did with quantum physics so we get through the advert break okay, so
Pick it up from the app. Lay the segments of the orange out flat, thus solving the problem. The chocolate orange bar was born. Six segments of Terry's chocolate blended with real orange, which is now enjoyed by travellers all over Britain today. Chocolate orange bar. Another ridiculous stick of chocolate from Seem to have too many adverts here. So, part three starts in a minute. You'd better ring the royal. All types of insurance, all kinds of mishaps. You'd better ring the royal. So here we go, the final part on Einstein. During this last decade of his life, he found himself more and more a public and political figure. Throughout his life, Einstein had been outspoken in his support of the plan for a Palestinian homeland for the Jews. In appreciation of this and his world renown, he was actually offered, so he declined, the presidency of the new state of Israel. So Einstein is deeply into politics. It's highlighted by the fact that he's been offered the presidency of Israel. So it's split between physics and politics. I don't think he was really putting enough effort into physics and he had too much politics he had to get involved in. If, he, <clears throat> if he'd been able to have more time for physics maybe he would have sorted out all more of his mistakes, but he didn't. His reason for declining was as follows. Mm -hmm. Equations are more important to me because policy is for the present, but an equation is something for it. Dr. Albert Einstein is dead at 76. A refugee from Hitler's Germany, here at Princeton, he was a member for 22 years of the Institute for Advanced Study and recognized as the foremost mathematician and physicist of modern times. Since developing his theory of relativity, Dr. Einstein has been showered with academic honors, including the Nobel Prize and countless other awards the world over. This introduction is typical of the esteem in which he was held for his many talents. Albert Einstein, scientist and philosopher. Nobel laureate, loyal son of his people, friend of Israel, his daring speculation, coupled with deep researches in mathematical physics, have ranged from the microcosm of the atom to the macrocosm of interplanetary space. A devoted apostle of peace in the atomic age his calculations helped bring about, Dr. Einstein was a friend of the world's great. Men like India's Prime Minister Nehru were among the leaders and statesmen who considered it an honor to visit him. Shy and retiring personally, his genius has revolutionized man's concept of the universe. So, so basically, <clears throat> you got a poor physics student and always most of his silly ideas and his mistakes uh, changed how we do physics. We're getting on Albert to... Einstein died in the hospital at Princeton. His final words were, I only wish I'd had more fun. The autopsy showed that Einstein's brain, which was of average size, differed in no way from those of other men. He had forbidden any memorial ceremony, which he considered repugnant. He wanted neither eulogies nor a grave. Only his closest relatives and friends took leave of him at the cremation. In accordance with his wishes, the ashes of this citizen of the world were scattered to the wind. In the years after Einstein's death, it was fashionable in the scientific world to say that Einstein's great thinking was all in the first 45 years of his life. Um, no, you see... <coughs> Headlines like Einstein wrong question mark, and there's a lot. There was a lot of people saying Einstein is wrong. I mean, Einstein did introduce uh, a lot of new ideas, 
mean uh, some of them probably were probably are not quite so wrong as others and so you, with Einstein you have a bit vast body of things to look at and so when you start saying Einstein is wrong it is a big a lot of things to look at and people have picked up on different things being wrong hence why you're getting all these sort of headlines Einstein wrong Einstein challenged been going on for a very long time we go back to so, the relativity skeptics it's been a long tradition of people criticising Einstein's ideas Einstein, and Einstein having so many ideas it generates a lot of criticism and that he wasted his later years looking for a unity in the cosmos in his later work he avoided making use of quantum mechanics even though Einstein had originally nurtured this theory so, so now we're getting on to quantum physics, what Einstein did with quantum physics had he further pursued his early work in quantum mechanics, as Niels Bohr and Werner Heisenberg did, the scientific community would have continued to look upon him as their most forward-looking and brilliant thinker. Quantum mechanics. In 1905, the very same year that Einstein perfected our understanding of life with his special theory of relativity, he also set in motion a spectacular attack on that understanding with the absolutely outrageous suggestion that light could carry energy only in small packages. When I shine light on this solar cell that powers the toy helicopter, the rotor starts turning. The light is kicking around electrons inside the cell, and it's the energy the electrons get from the kicks that powers the helicopter. The fact that light can kick electrons around like this was only discovered at the very end of the 19th century. Explaining it was one of the few remaining unsolved puzzles about light. In his 1905 paper, Einstein explained this photoelectric effect with a shocking generalization of an idea Max Planck had come up with in 1900 in his own desperate attempt to deal with some glaring inconsistencies in the theory. So, <clears throat> so what they're trying to tell you here is quantum theory starts of 1900 with Max Planck and Einstein picked it up. But actually, that is a false history. I've looked into the actual history, and quantum physics goes back to uh, Roger Boscovich. And this is the book I've translated from Dragoslav. Uh, Boscovich provided the foundations of modern science. This book deals with the historical context of Boscovich unified field theory, along with recent applications. So, quantum physics actually comes from. Boscovich, and this is the 18th century, with this, with this false history of trying to get, trying, trying to say that quantum physics started in 1900, they're trying to get you to ignore what happened earlier. It sort of like makes Einstein more of a genius. Oh, Einstein's more of a genius. He came up with developing quantum physics, and actually, it has much earlier beginnings. Planck had noticed he could set things up if certain kinds of energy came in lumps, which he called quantum. But nobody, including Planck himself, really knew what to do with this until Einstein realized that by boldly extending Planck's notion to make light itself lumpy, he could account for the photoelectric effect. It wasn't until 1915, ten years after his proposal, that experiments unambiguously show that Einstein's idea about light quanta was absolutely right. Einstein won the Nobel Prize in 1922 for using light quanta to explain the photoelectric effect, not for relativity. Although his name will always be linked with it. Yeah, not, not for relativity because there was a lot of people protesting against relativity. A lot of people have protested against it. So I pointed out in that website. And this is an example of some of the criticism 
uh, has been leveled against uh, relativity, and it has been a big, a big mass of literature on this. So Einstein did not get the Nobel Prize for relativity because there was too many people protesting against it. There's uh, there's not so much protest against the photoelectric effect. Relativity. The fact is that if Einstein had never written a word about relativity, his pioneering role in quantum physics would have marked him as one of the greatest physicists in history. After launching the quantum revolution, Einstein remained an active participant. He was an inspirational and authoritative figure in the 20 years of turmoil that followed. In 1925, Niels Bohr, Werner Heisenberg, and others put together the final form of the theory, called quantum mechanics. At that point, Einstein developed serious misgivings. The first, the boldest, the most radical of the quantum revolutionaries turned into the theory's most severe, penetrating, and conservative critic. Einstein objected most... So, Einstein uh, criticized the direction that quantum physics was going in. And he may have been right, Einstein may have been right about quantum physics, but it's not taken up by the physics community. I mean, after all, Einstein had introduced so many other mistakes. ...vehemently to the refusal of quantum mechanics to offer any intuitive picture of what actually happens in the world. It fails, in his own words, to represent the reality in time and space. Indeed, the theory refuses to admit that things have properties at all, unless we actually measure those properties. Ordinarily, when you want to see something, you shine light on it. In doing this, you ever so slightly disturb what you're looking at, because light exerts a very gentle pressure. But this pressure is so tiny that something as big as this rose is hardly affected at all. Suppose, though, we were looking at a much more delicate flower, like this wispy chrysanthemum. If something is delicate enough, shining light on it will disturb it. It's impossible to learn what it was like when undisturbed. We can try to deal with this by making the light dimmer. Of course, as what we're studying gets more and more delicate, the light has to be made even dimmer. Before Einstein came up with light quanta, everybody just assumed that you could always make the light dim enough to make this disturbance completely unimportant. Einstein, however, pointed out that light is lumpy. It comes in well, I, don't, I don't think that's correct. It's, you go back to the idea that light is lumpy, then you, you do actually go back to Newton. And, as I'm saying, this person... Uh, Roger Boscovich was dealing with, with that sort of idea. He was extending the work of Newton. So from Newton, you're getting the idea of light being lumpy. Suddenly, with the way they want to rewrite history, to, I really to falsify history, you want to miss out about Boscovich. Then they're trying to make out Einstein's a bigger genius than he is. Quanta. I can illustrate the consequences with this strobe light. Ordinary light contains so many tiny quanta that you can't tell the light is lumpy at all. But when you make the light dimmer, what you're doing is reducing the number of light quanta without reducing the strength of each individual quanta. Eventually, you reach a point where the light stops appearing dimmer and you realize that what's really happening is that the individual quanta are simply coming less and less often. So as the light gets weaker, you don't reduce the disturbance. It just happens less often. Whenever you actually manage to see the flower, it's being shaken up in the same old way. The only way you can be sure not to disturb what you're looking at is to make sure that no quanta hit it at all. And you can only do that by turning off the lights completely. But with the light completely off, you can't do any observing at all. So at the atomic
atomic level, the mere act of observation unavoidably disturbs the object you're trying to study. You can then legitimately ask whether it really makes sense to say that an object has properties, such as speed, shape, or location, when the only way you can find out about these properties forces the object to change its speed, take on a new shape, or move to a different location. This is the idea behind Heisenberg's famous uncertainty principle. But for a theory to be acceptable to Einstein, it had to describe things that had properties, whether or not we insignificant humans tried to find out what they were. And probably Einstein was correct about that, but it's not the direction that quantum physics went, so he's taking too long with this part of the talk about quantum physics. I want to get to get to the end of things I want to make comment on. He asked one quantum physicist, do you really believe that the moon exists only when you look at it? So Einstein may have regarded quantum... So, with that comment by Einstein, um, the philosophical uh, underpinning of quantum physics, which is coming from Niels Bohr and Heisenberg and so forth, they were believing some weird things. They were believing things existed only when you observed them. So Einstein, who didn't believe that, is probably correct. <laughs> ...had properties, whether or not we insignificant humans tried to find out what they were. He asked one quantum physicist, do you really believe that the moon exists only when you look at it? Though Einstein may have regarded quantum mechanics as intellectually disreputable, he would surely have agreed that in practical terms, the theory he nurtured and later attacked is successful on a scale unprecedented in the history of science. It under so, so, so although quantum physics might not be interpreted correctly, you can still actually use the math and so forth and actually... Um, Use, use it in developing uh, electronic devices and so forth. Lies microelectronics and microbiology. It's the foundation on which modern chemistry rests. It explains how the stars burn and how the early universe evolved. And although few physicists today would go along with Einstein's philosophical objections to the quantum theory, I don't, I don't agree with that. I think there are physicists who still object to certain philosophical interpretations of quantum physics, and some of them do take uh, Einstein's philosophical interpretation. As I say, his philosophical interpretation probably uh, makes more sense. Almost all would agree that bringing general relativity and the quantum together into a harmonious whole is one of the great unfinished tasks of science. And that is where, where Einstein's messed things up a lot with his relativity theory. If I go back to my book, this is the book, and before Einstein came along and messed things up, there was a unified field theory, a unified theory of physics, and you did have Newton's and Galileo's relativity combined with quantum physics. Einstein's lifelong search was for order in the universe. His mind sought to penetrate to the very remotest reaches of space and time, to the dawn of creation to the shape of the universe itself. He pondered the largest, most universal forces and entities, gravity, mass, energy, light, as well as the almost inconceivably insubstantial ones, the quantum, the motions of atoms and molecules, the photoelectric effect. In his mind, science, philosophy, and even religion found a fertile common ground. How much choice did God have in constructing the universe? So, Einstein's saying how much choice did God have in constructing universities. Sort of like Einstein gets mystical in the way he's talking about things. And, 
that makes him attractive to the new age people. The way Einstein was thinking about things is attracted to that certain group of people. But as I've pointed out in the beginning, his, his way of thinking about things is from sort of like dreams and, and dreams things don't have to make logical sense and so what he seemed to be doing was abandoning logic and, and basing physics upon that is quite uh, a catastrophe for physics. Physics should be based on logic. Today, some 40 years after Einstein's death, other physicists following in his footsteps are beginning to catch glimpses of how the universe began. What came before the Big Bang, they ask? And from tentative marriages of Einstein's general relativity laws with the laws of quantum mechanics, there come tentative answers. There was no before, because before the Big Bang there was no time, and without a concept of time, before makes no sense. That's one of the answers. Time and space were created from something more fundamental near the beginning of the universe, is another answer. But from what? The laws only give hints. And the struggle to understand goes on. The struggle that may bring new insights as great as Einstein's, but without the keys that Einstein gave us, there would be no hope ever to understand. No, I, I, he's saying Einstein's so wonderful on that, and I'm saying that he's Einstein's introduced a lot of bad ideas and mistakes and falsehoods and so forth. And so he's not Einstein's not quite so wonderful. Einstein did introduce a lot of ideas. He has been very influential and unfortunately a lot of that influence has uh, messed up physics. If Einstein hadn't discovered the laws of special relativity, then Poincaré or Lorentz would have done so in fairly short order. And, and Einstein was the one introducing lots of mistakes into that. He, if you go and buy Poincaré and Lorentz and others, and it does make more sense within a Newtonian physics context. Uh, Einstein's contribution to that was to make things in more of a mess. And if Einstein hadn't laid the foundations for quantum theory, then Bohr or Planck or Heisenberg would have done it within 10 years. So quantum, quantum physics, Einstein's contributions to quantum physics could have been done by others. General relativity was different. It was uniquely Einstein's. Without Einstein, the world would have waited for many decades for somebody else to realize that gravity is caused by space-time curvature. And you said uniquely Einstein. I'm tempted to say uniquely messed up by Einstein. What what you've got with general relativity is the maths was actually worked out by people earlier, like Riemann, and so. He was, he was using the maths which the math, mathematicians had developed and he'd applied it to physics and so if he hadn't done that somebody else could have probably done it without making so many mistakes. And we'd be looking to, I don't think I got this person, I think it was Hilbert, he was Hilbert. I think it's him, David Hilbert. David Hilbert, I think he was coming along with similar sort of things to the maths of general relativity at the same, at the same time as Einstein. And there's other people like him. Einstein was not the only one working on relativity at the time, but he does, Einstein does overshow everybody else who were working on relativity, and they tend to get forgotten. Indeed, it was general relativity, above all, that made Einstein famous, and his fame was well-deserved. I'm saying fame well-deserved, but I'm saying, as I pointed out, that Einstein's physics is based upon mistakes. So, he, he became famous, and really it was a mistake. It was a bad day for physics. In the whole history of physics, the two names stand out above all others. Isaac Newton, Albert Einstein, and all the rest were lesser intellects. 
and I, I'm basically saying being back Newton. Einstein added a lot of mistakes. Albert Einstein dreamed of things that were beyond common experience. His great theories of relativity were illustrated by examples that often dazzled or confounded most people. Even so, he dazzled people with his dreams. Basically, they were confusing. They didn't really make sense. Many scientists. For Einstein, more than any other thinker, questioned our most basic assumptions about the nature of the world we inhabit. But as he unlocked the mysteries of the universe for himself, he found it was like a set of nesting boxes. He found more mystery. In 1932, he made a spoken record for the League of Human Rights. He called it My Credo. The most beautiful and deepest experience a man can have is the sense of the mysterious. It is the underlying principle of religion as well as of all serious endeavor in art and science. He who never had this experience seems to me, if not dead, then at least blind. To sense that behind anything that can be experienced, there is a something that our mind cannot grasp, whose beauty and sublimity reaches us only indirectly. This is religiousness. In this sense, I am religious. To me, it suffices to wonder at these secrets, and to attempt humbly to grasp with my mind a mere image of the lofty structure of all there is. No, uh, that was all rather mystical th thinking by Einstein. Sort of says a lot of mystical things, and that 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 sort of what makes him a darling to the New Age people. Alright, so that's it. That's the end. So basically, <clears throat> Einstein has uh, made a mess of physics and it all starts from the basic lie upon which special relativity is built. And from that you just build more and more mistakes on top of that, mistakes and lies, false claims and so forth, and just keep building upon that. And when it comes to, well, we've got to put things right, well, there's too much inertia by people who think Einstein is a genius they just want to keep things the way they are in a mess so that's basically it and I I don't know what I'll be picking up with next time thank you the end <laughs>